Welcome to Grace. My name is Cindy and this is Church. Honor your father and mother so that your days will be long in the land your God is giving you. I like this verse because it has a uh, uh, instruction, but it also has a what will happen if you follow these instructions. Now, it's, it's not a guarantee, but it is a generality that if you do these things, this will happen. In this case, if you honor your father and your mother, your days will be long. Now, remember when you were young, or maybe you're young yourself, remember when your parents would say, look both ways before you cross the street. Uh, and you would think to yourself, I, I can do it. I, I can hear. I don't need to look both ways. Well, what happens if you walk out the street and you don't hear and you don't look both ways? You might be meeting your maker far earlier than you anticipated. So honor your father and your mother or listen to your parents when they're instructing you so that you may live a long life. The other day, Noah and I and Eva were in the mall and Noah made this new friend, but all of a sudden the friend started to cough and cough a lot and sniff the nose. And then I was like, Noah, we need to go. And Noah didn't understand, but I had to try to explain, you know, that not everybody was well and that perhaps if we wanted to uh, not get sick ourselves, perhaps you should follow my instructions. You ever hear a parent or a teacher say to somebody, well, you know, if your friends would jump off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge too? Well, of course not, it's the answer. And the reason a parent or the teacher says something like this is to try to give instructions to the child, hey, listen, I know you have friends and you have outside uh, influences, but trust me that I have your best interest in heart. So please listen to me first and foremost. Well, when I grew up, I was able to go to three different places. I was able to go to school, uh, anything I wanted in school or was school related. So I needed a textbook. I was able to get the textbook. If I needed a pen or a pencil, a stationery, I was able to get it. And I was able to play as much sports as I wanted. So if I wanted to play in the basketball team and there was uniform or shoes, or if I needed to go on a trip, my parents would let me do that, go to camps. And then the third thing I was able to do was I was able to go to church. So if there was a mission trip or there was a youth activity or uh, there was a Sunday night service or a movie night, I was able to go. And that was my parents' subtle way of saying, we want to make sure that we're looking after your mind, your body, and your soul. We're supposed to love our God with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strength, and with all our soul. Well, going to the church so often, I actually went to church on non-church days, okay? So we had this giant church parking lot and we'd go on a Tuesday night and we'd play hockey. There's no other church activities going on. And the pastor, pastor came into the parking lot with a brand new van. And on his brand new van, he had vanity plates. If you know what that means, it means you get custom license plates. And so for me, I might have Laker fan on my license plate, or if you really liked math, you know, you might have uh, some numbers on your license plate, or you like James Bond 007 on your license plate. Whatever you wanted, you could put on your license plate if you paid a little bit of money. Well, our pastor, who had a brand new shiny van, decided on his license plate, he was gonna put simply the word honor. Honor on his license plate. Well, as a teenager, I thought the choice of the word honor was quite peculiar. And I have, uh, I can't help but sometimes ask questions. So I said to the pastor, I said, Pastor Nick, why in the world would you choose the word honor? Of all the words for your nice brand new minivan, why honor? And then Pastor Nick said to me, well, you know, the, the, the rules, the Ten Commandments. Well, the first four are about God. So we love God in our first four. But then the next six rules are about loving uh, your neighbor. So we want to love God with all our heart. And then we want to love our neighbor as ourselves. But the uh, fifth commandment, the very first of the last six, uh, the last six is honor 
your father and mother. In fact, that goes before thou shall not steal, thou shall not covet, thou shall not commit adultery, uh, thou shall not murder. Somehow or another, when these 10 rules were placed, honor your father and mother were above that. So perhaps, perhaps there's a reason for that and maybe we should really take that seriously. And then he said something else. He said the second thing was, well, Stephen, you're never going to know how much your parents love you and how much your parents care for you and how much they're there to instruct you until you have your own children or until you're responsible for somebody else's life. Well, uh, I think that is true. I didn't fully understand things until I became a parent myself, or at least I didn't understand this until I became a parent myself. The other day, um, I was on the socials or Facebook, and I saw somebody of my generation, sometimes of our generation, uh, maybe not your generation, but my generation, we thought we knew better, okay? We knew better than the people that went before us. And so somebody in my age group had a post, a, so, uh, a meme, okay? So on one side of the meme was a picture, and it was a stick figure, and it, was a, and it said, my mom at 40. And my mom at 40 had, had a house, had a car, had two kids, and had a, a responsible job. And then I had on the other side of the, of the meme, it said, me at 40. And then there was a stick figure with their feet up, watching uh, the TV with a bag of popcorn. Clearly, they hadn't gone to work for the day, and they didn't really know what they wanted to do in life. So that is the danger. That is the danger that sometimes we can think we know better and then we get to the point where like, oh, did we know better? Well, that all brings me to the story of, of Hannah. And Hannah was this lady in the Old Testament who really, really, really wanted to have a child, but she couldn't, right? Sometimes these things happen. And she wanted to have a child so bad that she went to the church and she would pray every day. Uh, for a child, but when she prayed, you ever have one of those prayers that were so deep down, you know, you're, you're, you're really invested and you're crying and it just doesn't seem right from the outside. And the pastor came along and the pastor said to Hannah, hey, maybe you should stop drinking. Stop doing that. Maybe you should go home. And Hannah corrected the pastor and Hannah said to Eli, I said, I'm not actually drinking. I haven't drunk. What, I, what the problem is, is that I, I want something and I haven't gotten that thing. And I'm really praying to God for that thing. Eli, the priest, says, uh, uh, basically, I'm sorry and a blessing. And I hope you uh, get the desires of your heart. Well, not that much longer later, uh, Hannah finds herself pregnant. She gives birth to a beautiful uh, boy named some Samuel, and uh, in her prayers to God along the way, she made that familiar prayer that often we can do in desperate times. But she said, you know, God, if you give me a child, I will make sure to dedicate this child to you. And then sure enough, when Hannah had Samuel, she remembered that. And she said, you know what? It's a gift of God. And I need to make sure that Samuel was raised correctly and so she decides to bring Samuel to Eli, bring Samuel to the priest so that he can be brought up in the Lord's house. Now, Samuel moves in, and that would be, I, I'm just speaking as a parent, that'd be uh, heart-wrenching. I don't know how you do that, but uh, I guess I don't know how I'm gonna send my child to school for uh, 40 hours a week either, but I'm gonna do that because I know I can't teach my child math and science and all these other subjects that I don't know much about. So I'm gonna entrust my child to a school system. And similarly, Hannah is entrusting Samuel to Eli. And Eli, uh, who had made a mistake and admitted his mistake and blessed uh, Hannah previously, now selflessly, selflessly takes Samuel into his place. Let's him live there. Let's him sleep there and gives him instructions. 
One night in the middle of the night, Samuel uh, hears a call and he runs over to Eli's room. Okay, teacher, I'm ready to learn. Rabbi, tell me, what do I need to learn? And Eli's is like, uh, I'm sleeping. I didn't call you. Please go back to bed. Samuel goes back to bed and sure enough, he hears another call and he gets up, runs off to uh, Eli's room and he says, uh, Sir, I am here. Please let me learn whatever you have to instruct. And Eli says, no, 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 I didn't call you. Please go back to bed. And Samuel goes back to bed. And sure enough, another call happens. And uh, Samuel goes, rushes to Eli's room. I'm here. I'm here. Please teach me. And Eli, maybe after the third time, you know, third time's a charm. Maybe now he's really woken up. But he figures out, you know what? It's not me that's calling you. Perhaps the Lord's calling you. And perhaps next time, if he calls you again, this time, say, I am your humble servant, and I'm here waiting to learn from you. Sure enough, Samuel goes to bed, and sure enough, the Lord does call, and sure enough, Samuel replies exactly how Eli instructed Samuel. Now, a long story short, Samuel uh, becomes like the big priest. He is in charge of selecting Israel's first king. He has huge responsibilities in the Old Testament simply because he was willing to honor uh, his father and mother, um, Hannah, and listen to Eli in the temple. Now, you would think to yourself, you would think to yourself, if Eli was such a good parent, such a, a good instructor, such a wise teacher, Sure enough, Eli would have, if he had his own kids, if he had his own sons, if he had his own daughters, surely those would be even better kids because he loved them so much. Well, the truth is, even though Eli was wise, and even though Eli gave good instructions, he did have children, and they did not end up the way Samuel did. In fact, uh, they did quite the opposite. They were not doing what was right in the temple. And Eli confronted them and said, guys, this is not right. You need to stop this. This is not bringing glory to God. But they went about their ways, continuing doing opposite instructions of Eli. And to make a long story short, uh, their life was not uh, as long as it should have been in the land of God had provided. You know, sometimes we can think to ourselves that uh, I'll honor your father and your mother is only for children and grandchildren. Oh, those children, they need to listen to us because we are older and wiser and uh, they need to listen to us. Well, you know, there is some truth that we are older and we are wiser and hopefully, ideally, they would listen so that because we have decent instruction for them. But we also have to remember that our children, our grandchildren are a gift of God and Jesus welcomed the children to him. So we have to have as much patience, understanding, loving with them. But I want to end with this. Jesus. Jesus in the garden, right? Right before uh, being arrested and in crucifixion, Jesus uh, is in the garden and he's pleading with his heavenly father, take this cup from me. Jesus is a, a full-grown man, and he has an opportunity to decide to continue the way his father is instructing him or, can, or to do it the way he wants to do it. And Jesus decides your way, not my way. See, as adults, we too fall into honor your uh, father and mother. Maybe we, have, maybe we have older parents, elderly parents, but even if we don't have them, maybe they've gone on to, uh, to, to heaven. But if we don't have them, we always have our heavenly father. And we need to uh, do our best to remember, just like our little kids or our grandchildren, sometimes uh, they are not doing so well. We need to reflect on ourselves and think, how are we doing in comparison to um, what Jesus expects of us. So if you're a child and you're listening to this, I hope 
that you dream big dreams. You think whatever you want to be, you want to be an uh, uh, engineer, that's awesome. That's cool. I would love to build a house with, with you one day. If you want to be a race car driver, I can't wait to watch you on TV. If you want to be an astronaut, please invite me onto this space shuttle. I would love to look down at the Earth from the moon. But dream big dreams. Whatever you want to be, I am sure that if you work hard at it, and uh, you could accomplish it. And trust in the people that God has surrounded you with. They love you. They care for you. They want the best for you. They're trying to instruct you and mold you. And I'm pretty sure that they, because they have their own life experiences, can help you get to the places uh, that you want to go. And if you're in the position of being an adult and you're looking down on children or helping children, I should say, I pray for you. That takes energy, takes understanding, takes patience, uh, takes wisdom. Uh, I pray for you in that. And I also pray that you will reflect upon your own self. Are you honoring your father, your heavenly father in your daily actions with the outside world? This is Grace. My name is Stephen, and this is Church. I've heard a thousand stories of why they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that.
are perfect in all your ways. You are perfect in all your ways to us. To us.